Hey everybody. Hey, let's do some improv sewing. Let's start right now. So to get started with this project, you'll need two fabrics. One will be your focus fabric. I have three yards of this fabric and it's so colorful. I knew that when I bought this fabric, I was going to pair it with black, but I didn't know what I was going to make, but I finally figured something out. I love this fabric, so I bought three yards of it. And I should mention that this fabric is so beautiful and amazing, but it is called Into the Meadow. It's a Hoffman fabric. It's a Hoffman Spectrum print by Hoffman Fabrics. So if you wanted to get this exact fabric, that is what it is. So my focus fabric, I have cut into 10 inch squares. I got about 45 10 inch squares out of my three yards of fabric, which is great. And then the accent fabric, which is the black, I'm going to cut one and a quarter inch strips from this. And for every one 10 inch square, you'll need one one and a quarter inch strip. So I'm just going to cut it as I need it and then we'll get started on the actual block. So for each block that you make, you'll need one of your 10 inch squares and then one strip of the black accent fabric that is one and a quarter inches wide by the width of fabric. So I have just used uh, yardage for mine as I mentioned before but you can also use a jelly roll and then just cut it in half lengthwise. To get started I am going to cut somewhere straight across on my 10 inch fabric and you can start anywhere just don't start in the middle. So I like to start on one end and so I'm I'm not even going to measure I'm just going to make sure that it's straight by using the lines on my cutting mat because I've already lined the block up by the lines on my cutting mat so I'm I just want it to be straight across because I want to keep everything even and then I'm just going to make a cut right across like that and so now I have a smaller strip and a wider strip I could have made that cut anywhere except the middle of the block. I want to stay away from the middle of your block during this whole thing. That's kind of a key to make making this work. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my strip and I'm going to join these two together again, but I'm going to put a black strip in between them. So I'm just going to, I'm not going to cut my strip. I'm just going to line it up along the edge and sew a quarter inch down that line. And then when I get to the edge, I'll stop sewing and I'll just cut it off like that. So let me get this sewn on and then I will show you what it looks like. Okay, so I've sewn it on. So I'm just gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut that just like that. And I'm gonna press this black fabric back and we're going to press everything to the dark fabric. So let me press that real quick and then I'll bring it back. I'm trying not to bump my camera because then you guys will go all wiggly and it might make you dizzy. So I press that back. Now I'm just going to take this smaller piece and join that back together, lining up the top of my fabric and the edge like this. I want my fabric to stay in a square as much as possible. So I'll sew that on for you. There you go. So I've sewn it on just like that. Now the next step is I'm going to take my whole piece and I'm going to turn it a quarter turn so that the this, this black accent fabric that I've just sewn on is now horizontal to me, just like it is to you. Now I'm going to make another cut again anywhere except for the middle. I'm staying away from the middle. So I'm just going to cut a square right here. I'm just going to make a cut this way now. And then I'm going to take again my accent fabric, which I have on my knee here. And I'm just going to sew this strip right to here like this, 
right down the line. There you go, so I've sewn it on. And you want to make sure, like I said, that your seams are all pressed towards the dark fabric. That's gonna really help you when you go to quilt it. But there we go, I've got it turned on. Now, instead of taking this one and just flipping it over like this, before I do that, I'm going to turn it like so, so that the line up here is opposite from the line down here. So I'm just gonna flip this over. Don't worry about this little thing hanging off. We're gonna cut that off after we sew it. Again, I'm gonna line up the top of my fabric like this, and then just sew all the way down. There we go, so I've just sewn that on, and I just brought it to the cutting board right after I've sewn it on. This little extra tag sticking out, I am just gonna cut that right off so it's even with the quarter inch there. Throw that away. And now I can press this one back just like this. And then that will, when I press that down to the dark side, that will have that line in a different place now. I'm trying to finger press it here. I'll iron it in a minute. There we go. So now that line is in a brand new place just like that. So this long line that goes through the entire block, again, I'm gonna turn that so it is now horizontal to me. And I'm going to make a third cut somewhere. I think I'll do it right here. And you, when you make these cuts, now that you've got some extra lines sewn in here, you want to line everything up by these lines now. So I'm just gonna put my ruler along that stitch line, along here, and I'm going to put this line along the top of that one. So that way I know everything's gonna stay square within the block. That's really, really important. And when you're sewing these strips on, you just wanna sew it as straight as possible because you want everything to be either vertical or horizontal. You don't want any diagonal or wonky lines. So take your time and just do it the best that you can. Okay, going to use my strip. You should get four cuts out of your strip of fabric. You should be able to sew it onto this four times. So I'm gonna sew a strip onto this side now, just like this. Okay, so I've sewn it on. And now again, I'm gonna take this piece and I'm just gonna turn it so that now the line that would have gone through here is now up here. Flip that over and line it up at the top and sew right down here. And the nice thing about that too is when you sew that down, you can sew these seam allowances down to where they're supposed to be. All right, we're getting there. So that's what this looks like so far. Now again, the strip that goes all the way through, the last one I've sewn on, I wanna make sure that that is turned um, one thing that really helps me to keep my seams laying flat, especially when they're just little strips like this, is I just got this clapper, and I think that's what they're called. And this is the first time I've ever used one, but I, I after I sew that, I'm sorry, after I iron that seam down, I just press this clapper on it for a little bit. And that has really helped keeping my seam allowances down where they're supposed to be. So. It's the first time I've used one and um, I really like it. I recommend getting one. Um, okay, so I only have got one more to do and I think I will do this one somewhere in here maybe. Let's try a different measurement. Let's try this. I think I'll do it right here and just make another cut all the way through. And I've got one more. I've only got about this much left so i'm just going to sew this one on and do the same procedure and let's take a look at the block after i sew that on okay looking good so far last time i'm going to spin this around like this and sew and sew that on flip it over again lining always lining up at the top and on the sides and sew my final seam down I cut off my little tabs they're sticking out there. I'm going to do one more press and then we'll take a look at what it looks like. Sorry, all you're seeing is my weird arms now. 
Okay, so there is my block. And every one will look a little different because you're going to be cutting them and looking at them in a different place. So let's take a look at this block. So when this block is finished, like this, you should only have one line that's going all the way through. So every other line is broken and does not go through the entire block. You should only have one line left, your final line, that goes through the entire block. Now, your block should also still be around 10 inches. And when I did my first couple, I, I, could, I could trim it at 10 inches. But a couple of them were just slightly off, slightly smaller. I didn't have my ends matched up as well as I would have liked to. So I decided to give myself some grace and to trim. I've decided to trim this block to nine and a half inches that way it'll give me some grace and I will you know be able to know for sure that I will get nine and a half inches out of out of this and so when I go to square up this block I'm not squaring it up by the edges at first I'm going to find a, a strip a black strip in here that I can line up with the edge of my ruler both horizontally and vertically so I'm just going to find a good line that I want to measure by and so I know that this is square I know that this is square now I can and I'm within the nine and a half inch line so now I can just trim this both the top excuse my arm and on the side take those away and now I can spin the block and trim these two sides now I can use my block as a square because I've cut those at nine and a half and so I'm just going to use that to square up the rest of the block again excuse my shoulder and arm there we go so that is my block now every one of your blocks will look a little bit different because you've put your lines in different places this is so cool and so you'll just do this to all of your blocks one strip for each 10 inch block so go crazy and have fun with this let's see what they all look like up on the design board okay so i got 35 of them made i did of course i do have more and uh i've decided maybe to save those in case i want to make some kind of cool border or something like that. I'm still kind of deciding, but when I put all these up, kind of in a random way, well, yeah, they're pretty much in a random way. To me, it looks, I thought it would look like a maze, but to me, it looks like a huge floor plan of like a house. <laughs> so the funny thing is, is my Facebook feed lately has been getting all these floor plans of houses for some reason. And I look at them because I think floor plans are interesting to look at. But the funny thing is, I always look for which room would be my sewing studio. And my husband said I can't have the master bedroom as a sewing studio. So I always look for the next biggest room, which would be my sewing studio. Just kind of a side note there. But anyway, I think this looks like a huge floor plan. And I've really been debating as I've been making this on to whether I want to put sashing in between the blocks. Part of me doesn't want to because part of me kind of thinks this looks pretty cool in an abstract way. But the other part of me is like, okay, but if I put sashing on, it'll give your eye something to kind of focus on and things like that. So I put a little picture here of a few blocks with sashing over it so that when you make it, you can decide if you want to put sashing over it or not. For me, I think I've decided I don't want to put sashing over it because, or sashing in between the blocks because I really like this abstract look. And I think if I want a place to put for my eyes to settle, I will do that in the border. So I'm gonna, my first border will be black, of course. And then I will maybe use my extra 10 inch squares to create some, to cut those into strips and create some sort of other border. So I'm gonna sew these blocks together just like they are right here 
and then we will go from there. So here is how I decided to make my border. I took my leftover 10 inch squares and I cut it into four two and a half inch strips. And then I cut a strip of my black background fabric, uh, also two and a half inches by width of fabric. And I'm just gonna take these leftover uh, strips or yeah, strips that I've cut and I'm just gonna line that up right along that. And I'm gonna sew this down. I'm gonna sew all four of these on like this and, and they should all fit. So I'm just gonna sew down one side and then back up the other side. So I've got like a little tube. So let me get that sewn and then I'll show you what it looks like. So as you can see, I've got my two strips sewn right side right sides together on both sides so it forms a little a little tube in here i hope that you can see that it's just a little tube and so i just kept them all in a long row and i've got about this much of the black left over at the end i have a little strip tube junior ruler and i have a regular strip tube ruler too but this strip tube junior ruler is just a, a mini me of that. And this was actually given to me by my mother-in-law, which is pretty awesome. So I am just going to start at one end here and I'm going to put my three inch line along the stitching line, just like that along the stitching line. And I'm going to cut at an angle up towards the top like this. And then my arm is going to be in your way, but then I'm going to come around and do this side as well. Get rid of that. So when I open this up, I will have a three inch. Now there's a little bit of stitching on the end right there, but you can just pull that up. So I'll end up with a perfectly square three inch half square triangle. And I'm going to press that. But then I can just take my strip tube ruler and turn it over and again, put my three inch line on the stitching line and then line up the edge to my previous cut and cut across this way. And then I can get one more this way. Grab that like this. Now I've got a little bit left down here, so I'm going to turn this over and now I'm going to put my two inch line on that stitching line and then cut this this way. And now I have a cute little two inch half score triangle like this that I can use this for the corners of my border. I can put four of these together and just make a little, a diamond or an hourglass or whatever you want to make. So I'm going to put that in another pile. And so then the next, I just start over again with the three inch line on my stitching line and do the same thing just right on down the line. So then when I open these up and press them, I will have a bunch of these half square triangles that I can now arrange on the border however I like. And I would play with this if I were you. I played with mine and I ended up with a whole bunch of fun little designs. You can turn them all the same direction. You know, you can just create whatever fun little border that you want. And so I would definitely encourage you to play with that because there's so many fun designs that I kind of, you know, came up with different ways that you can arrange your border. So I'm just going to cut up the rest of these and arrange them around my border and we'll see what shape it takes. Oh, and by the way, if you're on Facebook, don't forget to join the Revelation Quilts Guild, which is the group. It's just under facebook.com slash Revelation Quilts Guild. And I'll put a link to it in the description, but we are having monthly challenges. We're just gonna have a great time in there. You can show off all of your, your projects and everybody's just having so much fun. 
100% supportive group. I have not had one person make a snarky or a bad comment. So it's open to everybody. Anybody can join. So think about joining that. We're going to have so much fun with, especially with these monthly challenges. I'm super excited. Prizes will be given away. Anywho, this is my final quilt. See my awesome border? I love that border. I put to, I, I actually put together a bunch of different possibilities with that border. It's just half square triangles put together with the black. I wanted something that would give your eyes a place to go to with all of this labyrinth or floor plan business going on in here. And I know a lot of you, I'm guessing a lot of you would have put sashing between each block. And that is precisely kind of the reason I didn't put sashing between each block because I wanted it to look just like this mismatch, uh, mishmash is what I meant to say, not a mis mit mismatch. Anyway, my tongue is tying around in my mouth. I like this super abstract look and I think the, the black just pops out. So if you would have been one of those people to put sashing around each block, I think that would look pretty awesome too. So I just wanted to mine to be a little different and, and unique and I wanted to see what it would look like. But overall, I'm super happy with this. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I knew I wanted to put this fabric with black because that would just make it stand out all that much more. Anyway, I love this quilt. I haven't measured it, but I can do that right now. Let's see, I've got 52 by 70. So that's how long this, uh, it's 70 inches long, 52 inches wide. So there you have it. There's the Labyrinth tutorial. I hope you enjoy. If you like the content you see on this channel, please, please feel free to subscribe and don't forget to join that Facebook group because that's where all the fun is happening right now. And uh, I got a great bunch of people in there right now. So come and join that party. Anyway, and if you really time. like this video and want to see more scrappy projects made on the fly, check out this video right here. Till next time. Thank you. Bye.